Ivy, I wanted to quickly show you how Ivy integrates with your QuickBooks Online account and how all the things on Ivy map over to the QuickBooks interface on QuickBooks Online. So first, let's start inside a project. Here we are in Ivy Residence. Let's edit the project so we can take a, a deeper look at some of the details. Specifically here, we're interested in the sales tax. Let's add a new sales tax. We'll call the, the, the tax name um, SF City. We'll call the agency California. And we'll call the, the rate, let's just say it's 8.75. And we'll go ahead and click Add. Now we see that F SF City is set up as my tax rate. And we'll see why that's important later when we look at the integration with, with QuickBooks Online. We're going to update that project. Now, if you're connected to QuickBooks Online and you go into your account settings, at the very bottom of the account settings, you'll see that you are synced successfully and you'll have access to this new tab called QuickBooks. When we click into this QuickBooks tab, what we're going to see is how we can map all the different types of line items on Ivy over to their corresponding income and expense accounts on QuickBooks Online. So notice here we give you the options of product income account and product expense account where you can map things. And just to test things out, I went ahead and on my QuickBooks account, I set up a new income account called Test Sales Income. So we can go ahead and set that here on Ivy. So let's go ahead and choose it. Here it is. We're going to go ahead and choose it for product income. We're going to send everything. This is the QuickBooks account to the Test Sales Income account on QuickBooks Online. And we're going to go ahead and click Save. Now, when we set up new products in Ivy, they are all going to be associated with the test sales income account on QuickBooks Online. But let's go ahead into an invoice and actually see these things work in real life. So here, we'll go into an invoice. I already have one set up. We can see that it's worth $884.06. There's one product on it. But let's go ahead and add a product with a few different details so we can see exactly how those things map over. We'll add another item. Let's just add the same one. We'll give it a different description to tell the difference. Test product DESC. We'll just call it like that instead of description. And we had the default test product set up originally as 500 hours. But let's say it's a different product and it's three units, uh, $450 with the same 35% markup. For this one, we'll say that there are $200. Um, and the item and the shipping is taxable. Now that first line item that I created earlier, you can see it's one quantity for $500 with a 35% markup. So the total price that we want to send over to QuickBooks Online, $675 and $1822, we're going to see if those map over. Here we've got $150 of shipping, where the shipping is not taxable, but the item is. Here the shipping is taxable and the item is. And of course, we're going to go ahead and click Save. Now here is our invoice with the two different products we set up with all of this information, the shipping and the taxes, and we expect to see the same sort of thing happening on QuickBooks. Let's go into QuickBooks and see exactly what happened. So if we go into Customers on QuickBooks, and this is your QuickBooks Online account that you're already probably familiar with this interface, but we can see that same project that I have in Ivy is now my customer in QuickBooks Online. I click into that, and here's that invoice. Let's see that things are mapping out pretty correctly. Great, so here's that, that the test product with the big DESC, SC, quantity three, that's correct, that's the final price, that's correct, and we did mark it as taxable. Here's that other one with one unit, 675, looks good. And then notice here that because we named one shipping taxable and the other one not taxable, QuickBooks and Ivy actually sends this over as two separate line items to make sure that all income is being tracked appropriately, including the taxes. So here's the taxable one for $200, and here's the not taxable one for $150, means that everything is mapping out exactly right. You can see I've got SF City as my tax rate, which you saw me set up in Ivy and how that carried over onto QuickBooks with that same percent amount, um, and of course the same value. Now, let's just make sure that all of these products and taxes also got mapped to the right places. Under our transaction uh, option on the left-hand navigation bar in QuickBooks, you can click on Chart of Accounts. Now, if I look up that test account that we set up earlier, we expect to see both of those products registered here, but without their shipping because shipping was sent to another account. So let's go in here, and that's exactly right. Here are those two products that we saw. This one was the one that was three units. This was the one that was two, one unit, and these numbers are exactly as we expected them to be. 
Um, okay, so that's that. Oh, also sales tax. Let's make sure that we check to say sales tax. Remember, we set up the agency as California as the agency name, and SF State was the was the tax rate name. And we can see that that number, 236 and 3 cents, is the same number that we saw on taxes for our for on our IV account, so we know that all of these things are mapping out exactly right. So again, Ivy, Ivy makes sure that all of this information is sent over to QuickBooks so you can use QuickBooks for its reporting capabilities while also using Ivy to run your interior design business. Thanks so much.